Hey guys, I'm Gozenya and this is my first Simple Rockets player spotlight. Today I'd like to focus on a Simple Rockets legend, Kelly. I'll be giving you some background on Kelly, her history in the game, and highlighting some of what we think are her best works. So let's get started. First, a quick introduction to Kelly. Her current Simple Rockets username is Kelly Neon Binary, which depending on the context can mean non-binary cat person or cat who programs in binary. That comes from Kelly herself, so I think it's true. I think it goes without saying that she's a fan of cats. Kelly uses the pronouns she and her to describe herself, so make sure to do the same when you interact with her on the website, Discord, or other forums. She's from the USA, and English is her native language. Her favorite things to do in real life are play games and create digital art. Now, let's get into what makes her such a great Simple Rockets 2 player. First off, her branding is incredible. She has such a great company logo and stays on brand with her livery and color templates. Secondly, she is an absolute master when it comes to using the out of the box or vanilla components. I would classify her as a purist and the things she's able to do without modding or tinkering are nothing less than phenomenal. Finally, with the introduction of Vizzy, Kelly demonstrated that she is a programming sorceress and pioneered some of the programs and methods that have now become ubiquitous in the Simple Rockets community. Her auto launch and landing rockets are the achievements that she is most proud of, and I will spend some time highlighting them and how they work. Without any further ado, let's get right into showcasing some of her amazing work. Let's begin by pulling up her first public craft on the site from two years ago, the Atlas V, 551, and New Horizons spacecraft. This craft was made for a replica challenge, and while it didn't win the challenge, it was the beginning of her public Simple Rockets career and marked an important milestone. I'm going to use this craft to demonstrate the power of some of her later work, which I hope will be a fitting tribute to her. Let's fast forward now to her more recent accomplishments. While still focused on making beautifully simple rocket designs, arguably her greatest accomplishment this year has been the development of auto launch and auto reuse programs using Vizzy. These programs can be imported into almost any craft design. Let's dive a bit deeper into our auto launch program because this is the one that we will port over into the Atlas V. So as you can see, the craft design itself does not disappoint. It's got her patented logo on the front and the striping and textures are phenomenal. However, what we came for is the program inside. So to access the Cal Auto Launch program, simply go to Edit Program from the menu and you can start to look through all of her coding. Now, first thing I'll call out here is the coding is a bit complex and it's long, but that's really what's required in order to do the complex staging management and deal with different craft designs as you bring it in. As a reminder, this script is intended to be used on just about any craft, so it's supposed to be a universal design. Let's step through the code here for a second. What we start with here is the intro text, which is basically just a way to remind you how to launch the program. The first thing that I'll call out is the way that she initializes the program, which is so genius. Rather than creating an activation group, which could have problems with different types of crafts, it literally just says, increase the throttle, and it starts, which is perfect because that's the way you would start any craft anyways. After that, we move on to the pre-launch phase. This is where you can define some of these variables and she's done a great job of commenting out this code. So you can see these three, which are inclination do you want? What orbit height do you want? And then if you have an activation group to abort the cycle, you can load that in there for your craft. Next, she initializes a countdown phase. So at this point, Kelly pretty much just queues up the launch once you've initiated the throttle. Starting with T minus 10 seconds, it loads all of the initial variables and then goes through a five second countdown with the display. After this, we move on to the liftoff phase. Now, liftoff is where things start to get pretty interesting. From here, the program initiates a formatted display script and a throttle and staging management script which are key to the universal aspect of this program, specifically the throttle and staging management. So what this script is essentially looking for are quick changes in thrust that indicate that you've either lost solid rocket fuel for side boosters or depleted a main stage. It then triggers the staging activation. I'll call out too, there are various portions of the script that are looking for part explosions to detect failures, 
as well as the formatted time. After the liftoff phase, the gravity turn is initiated. Now, Kelly uses a fairly simple version of gravity turn, which works for most crafts, but can be adjusted depending on your craft's setup. So basically what this portion of the code does is waits until you meet two thresholds, velocity and altitude, and then initiates a simple gravity turn according to the aggressiveness variable. Again, I won't go into great detail here, but I would definitely recommend going through this code in detail if you want to create a gravity turn program of your own. Lastly, after the gravity turn is concluded is the final circularization phase. This phase is intended to drop you into a circular orbit, which as you can see is quite a bit of complex code, but really what this portion is trying to do is get you into that perfect circular orbit so that you can then begin your rendezvous or any other orbital maneuvers that you want to try. Okay, so now what you're really wondering here is, how do I use this for myself? Now that part is pretty simple. While you have this program open, open up the menu, save program, and you can leave it as KAL, which is Kel Auto Launch, or you can give it your own name. So I'm gonna leave it as KAL for tribute, save it, and sure enough, I already had it saved. Of course I did. And I wanna overwrite it in this case, just to make sure I'm working off of the right copy. Then what I wanna do is actually port this over or load it onto my other craft. So now I'll switch back over to the Atlas V. Again, go to options. And if I just go edit program, what that'll do is ensure that the program is loaded onto my primary chip, which in this case is exactly what I want. But you could just know that you could also load it onto any other component on the craft that you want. So I'll go to edit program. I will load the program, KAL, save to craft. I'll go ahead and save the craft so it stays on there just in case something happens. Then I should be able to load this onto my launch pad and run it. And there you go. So I've already got the initiation code, which is perfect. And this might be, I can't tell if it's sunset or sunrise, but this might be a nice oh, sunset. That's okay. We'll go ahead and give it a shot. I didn't change anything about the program. It's all using the stock settings and we're just gonna give it a whirl and see how it works. So I bring it to full throttle. The countdown begins. And we've got a clean takeoff. You'll notice this one has those beautiful side boosters. So the real test is gonna be to see, oh, there's the gravity turn going. And you can see we've got a readout of the apoapsis against target. We'll see what happens when those solid boosters run out of fuel. The hope is that if the program works perfectly, they should just jettison as soon as the fuel's out. So you notice this one's got quite a bit of thrust, so we're doing a pretty aggressive gravity turn, and there you go. There's those solid boosters coming right off. So that's the program detecting a change in thrust because the fuel ran out and they came off perfectly. Now we see we hit our apoapsis target, and now we're just gonna coast until we're ready for our circularization burn. If I can go to our map view here, you can see we're a decent time away from that. So I'll just fast forward till we get there. So now you can see we're executing our circularization burn and you'll notice the burn time ends up being about double the time to apoapsis which is a nice way of ensuring that you stay circular. You'll also notice that the craft is pointed pretty much prograde here, and we're about to run out of fuel in that first stage. Boom, fairing comes off, and then you see the stage separation, and we're onto our second stage. So that was the program basically seeing, again, a change in thrust, jettisoning the fairing, and then also detecting that there was no thrust generated there and doing another stage activation. Now, one thing that could be improved with this program 
would be the automatic detection of leaving the atmosphere as a trigger to jettison the fairing, but that's okay. That would save a little bit of weight during a burn, but you know, details. We finished our, our circularization burn and we are in orbit. And if I can show you this, we are in a pretty solid orbit, really low eccentricity. And we hit the apoapsis and periapsis basically perfect. So 82 kilometers versus a target of 80 kilometers. So good enough for what we're trying to do. And from here on out, you can then initiate your second stage maneuvers, depending on what you want to do with your craft. So I think that's a great example of how Cal Auto Launch works and how to bring it into a craft of your choosing. Now sit back and enjoy some video of me loading Cal Auto Launch onto some of her other amazing crafts. Isn't that a beautiful thing? This program was one of the things that inspired me to learn Fizzy and begin using it to augment my crafts. I'm so thankful for Kelly and her incredible work. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this player spotlight. I think it goes without saying that I recommend everyone follow Kelly and study her work. In fact, her one piece of advice for newer players to improve is to download and reverse engineer the works of players that you admire. And I could not agree with her more. Okay, everyone. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.